gotta stop and listen to the wind. We'll tell you things, Cola. You had yourself a vision. Tristar's Pictures' 1992 film, Thunderheart, has always stuck with me from the first time I saw it. Its message and portrayal of events still resonate today with current events on many indigenous reservations. The movie stars Val Kimmer, Sam Shepard, Graham Greene, Fred Ward, and Chief Thin Elk. The movie is based on several events that occurred on reservations in the 50s all the way through the 70s. Most notably, the second Wurundi incident at Pine Ridge Reservation in 1973 between the American Indian Movement and Richard Johnson's Guardians of the Ugala Nation, or Goons, which resulted in several deaths of tribal members, activists, and lawmen. The movie begins with FBI agent Ray Lavoie, played by Val Kimmer, being called in by his superior officer. His boss tells him about a tribal council member named Leo Fassel, who was murdered on a Native American reservation in South Dakota. Because of his Lakota heritage, he'll be heading there to investigate the murder. We learn in this meeting that Ray is disconnected from his culture. He lies about knowing his indigenous father when he actually knew him until he was seven. Ray also does not speak the Lakota language. However, because of his identity and cultural makeup, he is sent out as a way to appease the locals. Ray is partnered with veteran agent Frank Cooch Cotel, played by Sam Shepard, who is a legend in the borough and has been working the Badlands for over nine years. Ray finds out that Cotel has narrowed down the suspect list to Maggie Eagle Bear, a peaceful Native American political activist and school teacher, and Jimmy Looks Twice, leader of the radical Aboriginal rights movement, or ARM, played by Sheila Towsley and John Trudeau, respectively. The opening scene, when arriving on their reservation, depicts just how badly living conditions are and still are on reservations. The movie is directed by Michael Apton who is well known for documentaries and realistic nonfiction films. It was also written by John Fusco, who lived on a Lakota reservation for five years and incorporated some of the characters into the story. A line that sticks out to me that is said during this sequence, when they appear on the reservation, is when Frank says, a third world country smack in the middle of America. This is a very accurate description of reservations that natives live on and still lived on. Some have no running water and live in shacks or small homes with family members. The visuals given by Apted during this sequence really push forward the point that natives are living and still live in very harsh conditions. When Ray and Frank reach the murder scene, they meet tribal officer Walter Crowhorse, played by Graham Greene, argues against the jurisdiction of the FBI due to the crime happening on tribal land. Crowhorse is presented as an officer who distrusts the government due to the history between tribal leaders and the government in general. He is thoroughly warned by Frank not to intervene in this FBI investigation. The two agents then proceed to head to town. On the way, Frank tells Ray he thinks Jimmy looked twice, a leader of the radical Aboriginal rights movement, or ARM, is the prime suspect and that he's been working with Tribal Council President Jack Milton, who was played by the late, great Fred Ward. Jack has hired an unofficial militia to protect the reservation from Jimmy and the Arm, who oppose the Tribal Council's efforts to modernize the reservation. This character is based off Richard A. Wilson, and his group is based on the Guardians of the Ugala Nation, Goons, while Arm is based on the American Indian movement. A very fascinating part of this that blurs the lines of reality and fiction is that Jimmy Looks Twice is played by actor John Trudel. Now John Trudel was the actual national president of the American Indian movement from 1973 to 1979. When during this time frame is when this story actually takes place. This is something I always appreciate about this movie, the fact that it has this realism in there. And I gotta tip my hat to the casting writer, director of it. Jimmy is successfully caught and taken into custody while he is at an indigenous ceremony. But he escapes after a gunfight with the FBI and tribal police. This again shows some indigenous folklore 
because it is believed that Jimmy turned into a deer to get away, or it's presented as that could be believable. Although it's not really shown the transformation, it leaves the viewer wondering if it really did happen or not, as a deer runs away and Ray goes to find him. With Jimmy gone, Ray is out looking for answers and comes across Walter Crowhorse again. When Walter informs him that the murder took place on Maggie Eagle Bear's property and not where they found the body, Ray goes to collect evidence and finds bullets casing, but is told to leave by Maggie. Maggie Eagle Bear is played by Sheila Towsey, and the character of Maggie Eagle Bear is based off Anna Mae Aquish. Ray is initially mocked and ridiculed by the locals being called a Washington Redskin due to being of indigenous origin but working for the FBI. However, tribal elder Grandpa Sam Reaches, played by Ted Think Elk, and who was present during the ceremony Jimmy got arrested at, finds a liking to him and tells him that he comes from strong Native American blood. The relationship starts to kindle between the two, and a mutual respect starts to happen with him, Grandpa Sam, and even Walter Crowhorse. And I think the interactions between the three are hilarious, especially the trading aspect. When Grandpa asks for a favor or uh, show a sign of respect to trade, that whole interaction between the three is hilarious as Ray actually gives him his Ray-Bans and Grandpa gives him back a rock, which is not a fair trade, but they're just messing with them. And it's kind of a running gag in the movie and it adds a little humor to a serious concept in the movie. Ray returns to Maggie's house to question her grandmother and commends her for her activism. While Ray is visiting and questioning her, Maggie's house is then raided and shot by Jack's militia, who in turn injure Maggie's son as he is shot in the arm. The militia then claims the shooting was actually done by arm. Ray drives Maggie to the hospital and then sees one of the Jack's men outside, where he goes to confront and ends up fighting him. After witnessing the harrowing conditions and violence from Jack Milton's pro-government faction on the reservation, Ray gradually becomes sensitized to the Native American issues and begins to question which side should he really be on. Although Frank is convinced that Jimmy committed the murder, Walter Cohorse tells Ray the killer was heavier than Jimmy and is also the person who stole Leo's car, which was used to take the body from Maggie's property to the dump site where they found the original crime scene or believed to be the original crime scene. That car was still missing. Frank, however, dismisses this lead and tells Ray to focus on locating Jimmy instead of talking to Walter. Ray continues to meet with Walter and Grandpa Sam reaches, despite Frank's orders to stay away and don't start your own investigation. Leo's car is with a large jacket, trunk, supporting Walter's claim that the killer was bigger than Jimmy. Ray suspiciously takes the raffle ticket stub from the jacket pocket and takes it to Maggie, who organized this raffle to see if she can identify who it belongs to. Maggie informs Ray that she isn't concerned about the possibility of contaminated water on the reservation and thanks him again for the help with her son before leading away to go check out the water at what she called the source. Ray is convinced that Jimmy is innocent and races to Grandpa Sam Reach's home to see if he knows where Jimmy is. There he finds Jimmy and Grandpa Sam Reach's. He tells Jimmy he must leave or the FBI will capture him and possibly kill him. Jimmy refuses and delivers a powerful monologue, stating, Sometimes they have to kill us. They have to kill us because they can't break our spirit. We choose the right to be who we are. We know the difference between the reality of freedom and the illusion of freedom. There is a way to live with the earth and a way not to live with the earth. We choose the way of the earth. At this time, Jack Milton's men and the FBI bum rush the house, eventually arresting Jimmy. In the process, they destroy artifacts that Grandpa Reach's tribe, angering Ray, 
Ray eventually takes Grandpa reaches away to safety and then begins to ponder Sade Sian again. I find this scene so powerful, especially the Jimmy monologue, because as I said before, John Tudor is actually, was the president of AIM. And for him to deliver such a powerful monologue in a movie, especially based on the events at Ogala, really shows you the message the director is trying to push across here and the feelings of many indigenous people at the time and still to this day. It's very powerful and resonating that just because they have their own land or reservation is it really freedom. And I think that's the message this movie tries to push across too is we might have these conceptions that just because you live on a reservation, you have your own government, it's all fine and dandy. But this movie shows that the conditions are harsh and just because they claim they're free doesn't necessarily mean they're free. As the movie progresses, the signs come to show that Jack Milton and Frank were working together in a government cover-up of mining that's polluting the water on the reservation, which eventually leads to the unfortunate death of Maggie Eagle Bear. Ray reveals he recorded the killer of Leo implicating Frank. He and Walter then rush away to safety, eventually finding it in the area called the Stronghold. This part of the movie is also very powerful as it shows the reservation and its community finally standing up to the atrocities done to them by the government and Jack Milton. Thunderheart is a great movie that has many aspects. It's a great crime drama, but it also has so many inner layers to deliver a powerful message to what indigenous people went through during the real life events the movie is based on, as well as what they still struggle with today. One aspect of the movie that also sticks out to me is the fact that most of the actors who played indigenous characters were actually of indigenous heritage and culture. This, I believe, brings more realism to the subject matter and actually makes the viewer understand more the atrocities that are happening at that time and at the time now. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend you check it out. You won't be disappointed. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out thetanglove.com for more blogs, podcasts, and more reviews. And we'll catch you in the next one.